Hello guys, it is Gate of Theories here and today we are continuing to remember Elizabeth Sladen and her amazing show The Sarah Jane Adventures, a decade on from when unfortunately it all ended. Today we are continuing to look back at this series and look at where the show could have gone and what it might have had in store for us if unfortunately Elizabeth Sladen hadn't passed away. In the last video we discussed what would have happened for the rest of series 5 which was cut short due to Sladen's death and today in part 2 we are discussing all of the untold tales and the stories that we never got to see and the incredible adventures that unfortunately we missed out on. If you haven't seen part 1 yet you can go and check it out by clicking the card somewhere up here, I'm not sure where it'll be, or there'll be a link down below in the description. And for reference, I'm going to be using the Doctor Who Magazine Special Edition, the Sarah Jane Companion Volume 3 for my research, just in case you're wondering. But for now, sit back and let's discuss what would have happened in this show, and who knows, maybe could have still been happening today. <laughs> It was still unsure, like how we discussed last time, of whether Anjali Mahindra and Daniel Anthony, who played Clyde and Rani, were going to stay on to series 6, as they were both keen to develop their careers further. And the new character, Sky was created solely just for series 5, as she was the daughter of the Trickster. Spoilers, in case you didn't realise. The finale of series 5 saw Sky and the Trickster go head to head, and it would have been the end of Sky and the main villain, the Trickster, for good. So, Series 6 would have started introducing a new long-running villain, like the Trickster, for the show to use in the next few series. Series 6 was going to have a new production base as well, most likely new characters and maybe even a brand new setting. Because of this, it would have been potentially a relaunch of the show to invest in a new younger audiences and would have entered a new era of the Sarah Jane Adventures, like when a new Doctor or showrunner appears in Doctor Who. With the events of the Battle of Bannerman Road, Bannerman Road might have been completely destroyed and there were ideas of Sarah Jane maybe even moving out to the countryside for this new series and meeting new kids where she lived over there so the show could do less city-based stories and more country-based stories. But before this, there was still Series 5 to consider. While filming Series 5, it was unclear just how bad Sladen's illness was becoming, as she kept it very private, so the crew decided to film the first half of Series 5, then wait till the summer to film the second half. In the meantime, Russell T Davies decided to create a brand new sci-fi kids fantasy show, Wizards vs Aliens, which used the same team as the Sarah Jane Adventures, so the team wasn't doing nothing while they waited for Sladen to recover. The plan for the next few years was to do this every year, with the team creating a new series of Wizards vs Aliens, and then the Sarah Jane Adventures every year, and allowing Wizards vs Aliens to go more into the fantasy side, which Sarah Jane Adventures mainly avoided. The show even ended up using similar storylines, such as how Wizards vs Aliens ended up using an adaptation of The 13th Floor from Series 5, which I discussed in Part 1. Again, link in the description if you want to go and check it out. Because of this, it was planned for the first half of the series to be broadcast, when the second half of Series 5 to be broadcasted later on in that year, similar to when Doctor Who does two parts to a series. However, to extend the precedence of the series, many ideas were being considered on how to fill this gap, which were all being focused on a Halloween special to be shown on the 31st of October. The first idea was a Halloween special interactive episode without Sarah Jane, but instead Clyde, Skye, Rani, and maybe even Luke. This episode would incorporate the red button feature, where fans could vote for how the story would have played out, and then alternative versions of the script would have been created and recorded live. Bannerman Road was intended not to be the main setting for this Halloween special, so other ideas were being put forward, such as at Oxford, at Luke's University, which could offer spooky old buildings for a haunted house like seen in The Eternity Trap and Lost in Time, with the episode being called Full Moon. The second setting idea was Luke meeting his friends in the countryside outside of Oxford, 
by a railway station and would have been called fittingly the station. The third was a ghost train leading to an amusement park. The fourth was even camping outside but seemed to be harder due to British autumn weather which if you're from Britain I'm sure you know what I mean. The fifth was a Halloween party where everyone disappears and finally the sixth was an unknown location where the characters have been teleported to somewhere for reasons they then had to discover. The villains for this Halloween special range from the Weeping Angels finally appearing in Sarah Jane to the Trickster as long as it didn't interfere with Sky, the Cario Knight Witches from the Shakespeare Code, and even the Nightmare Man returning for a special. However, due to live recording seeming impractical and maybe even looking clumsy, alternative ideas were also being considered for this Halloween special. One idea, mainly for budget reasons, was to have an animated special where Elizabeth Sladen would only have to voice record. With animation, it meant the crew could do literally anything they wanted, so the idea was to travel to the United States and meet up with Maria and Alan, and again, the actors were all enthusiastic to replay their iconic roles. This episode would have been called Night of the Spectre, and even though we weren't going to get a proper episode of Maria returning, the idea of Alan and Maria returning for even a special like this just sounds absolutely amazing to me. However, all of this was unfortunately cut short when Elizabeth Sladen tragically passed away on the 19th of April at the age of only 65. The crew hadn't realised just how ill Sladen was, and over the next few days many tributes were made all across television and on websites etc, including BBC Breakfast, News Round, BBC News, BBC Two and statements from Russell T Davies, Stephen Moffat, Matt Smith and David Tennant. Then the upcoming episode of Doctor Who, The Impossible Astronaut, was quickly put in memory of her and CBBC released a 15 minute short labelled My Sarah Jane, a tribute to Elizabeth Sladen. More tributes and recordings were made throughout the week, including John Barrowman, Tommy Knight and Daniel Anthony reading messages from fans, Katie Manning, and finally Anjali Mahindra, who went to Cardiff to meet with the Doctor Who confidential team and share her memories. Sarah Jane's last main appearance in Doctor Who, The Hand of Fear, was then rebroadcasted and CBBC ended up showing every single episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures again. The two new Series 5 audiobooks were recorded and Elizabeth Sladen's personal autobiography was also introduced, as well as the tribute Goodbye Bandman Road, remembering Elizabeth Sladen over the next few months. Finally, the crew began working on Wizards vs Aliens, but Russell T Davies saw it as Sladen's legacy, with all of the inspiration of Sarah Jane adventures being passed over to this brand new show. To top it all off, Sladen's husband Brian Miller appeared as a cameo in the very first episode as a symbol of the show's now being passed on. But since there was unfortunately no Series 6, I thought we'd have a look at all of the incredible ideas this show had never used and may have done so at some point in the future. Some of them were planned for previous seasons and some might have never happened but it's still fun to look at. I'm just going to be listing all of these unfortunately untold stories and I really hope that some of them can be adapted to be in Doctor Who at some point. Firstly, we have Trinity Wells Investigates, the American AMNN news anchor character Trinity Wells who basically was just a returning character in the Russell T Davies era whenever there was trouble. Appearing in Doctor Who, Sarah Jane Adventures and Torchwood, she was finally going to get a proper main role which just sounds like something I didn't know I needed. She was going to be investigating strange events occurring in Ealing leading all the way back to Sarah Jane Smith. Next is an untitled story about the Chandras. Harash and Gita would have been kidnapped by the Russian equivalent of Tortured due to their encounter with the Jadoon. This would have also led to Sarah Jane being kidnapped and Luke and K9 having to return to save the day. Sarah Jane in prison. Mrs. Wormwood was going to return again by using her image translator to frame Sarah Jane as a bank robber, so she is in prison leaving the kids to uncover Mrs. Wormwood's new plan of bringing the bane through Britain's money supply. Everyone's asleep. The Bannerman Road gang wake up to find everyone's asleep. This later became the basis for the empty planet, but would still be cool to see this in the future in this type of form. Sarah Jane goes back to the future. 
As another Sladen light story due to her illness, it would have seen the kids gone back in time to make sure Gita and Harash end up together and they end up fighting an alien that could have threatened the future. School trip. During a school trip, the kids find an alien in distress. Time team. An archaeological dig would lift Sarah Jane's iconic green Nissan Figaro from where it had been buried thousands of years ago. An untitled Aztec story. An Aztec priestess had lived for thousands of years and was now working as an English teacher at Park Vale School and Clyde and Ronnie have to uncover it. An untitled story about Eddie Smith. Sarah Jane's father was to return into the future and see what his daughter had grown up to be like before he returned back to the past. These next few stories are a bit more in detail which kind of makes me believe that potentially they could return as potential Doctor Who episodes. An untitled story about the extraction. In an underground lab, an unseen alien creature is in a cage and is being prepared for an experiment. The extraction is run by the scientific company Alpha Solutions and with Professor Rivers' help, the gang manages to take out two of the main key staff members at the company and Sarah Jane and Clyde switch places with them to investigate what alien they're hiding. Turns out the alien is half alive and the scientists are extracting the alien substance that prolongs and enhances human life, giving humans super strengths. And Alpha Solutions had also hired Professor Rivers' old partner Toby from the Eternity Trap, who had begun studying alien science after Sarah Jane had inspired him. Ronnie can't stop the two scientists who Sarah Jane and Clyde had switched with, and turns out they had also taken some of the extracted power and now have super strength. They return to Alpha Solutions to take away the defenseless alien, but Clyde and Toby manage to teleport it home before they can take any more extractions. The Children of Blackmere Rises While Sarah Jane is away, Rani interviews for the school website an elderly man, Mr Bryce, living in flats on the council estate Blackmere Rise. Mr Smith gets Clyde and Rani in, but Clyde finds a shadowy figure in the estate while Rani is warned by Mr Bryce to leave before the children find her. Clyde sees the shadowy figure is his mate Zack from school who went missing but he is acting very very weird. Clyde and Ronnie return at night to investigate and see Mr. Bryce with some ancient alien equipment when they're confronted by Zack and a bunch of children all with alien devices around their neck and they begin getting chased. Sarah Jane luckily manages to appear and help them escape who had all along been undercover investigating the estate as well. The trio return the next day and find an underground base with Bryce and the children surrounding a half-buried capsule of alien technology. Bryce is a member of the long-lived alien race who were exploring when his spaceship crashed on Earth into Blackmere. He spent centuries searching for the ship, but when he finally found it, he couldn't remember the activation code, so he had been using the combined power of the children's minds to crack it. Sarah Jane gets Bryce to free the children, and Mr. Smith gives him the activation code. However, then a younger Bryce appears, his brother. Turns out they were both exiled and want to dominate Earth. The young alien manages to regain control of the children, including Rani. While this is happening, Clyde found Zack and managed to free him by taking his device off him. Clyde appears to Sarah Jane and Sarah Jane puts the device on her own neck and uses her own mental strength to free the children. The older Bryce disagrees with his brother and he takes the device from Sarah Jane and the two brothers have a mental fight and the place basically explodes. Okay, so these next two stories just sound absolutely amazing, especially if you're a fan of Sarah Jane Smith in classic Doctor Who or have gone back and watched them at some point. Two stories had been designed for a return of the classic story, Planet of the Spiders, which saw Sarah Jane have a giant spider from Metabelius 3 on her back and was the story when John Pertwee regenerated. The Web of Lies was the first story idea where the giant spiders had been physically linked to Sarah Jane for many, many years and were now strong enough to take control of her and dominate the world. The story would have seen Professor Rivers studying a blue crystal that had crash landed to Earth and getting Sarah Jane to investigate it. Sarah Jane then begins doing strange things, such as sleepwalking at 2am and even getting Ronnie and Clyde to have to keep an eye on her because of this. 
Sarah Jane has been collecting the blue crystals in her cellar and she gets a small garden spider. The blue crystals then make the spider grow in size and it jumps onto Sarah Jane's back and has the voice of the queen spider. Turns out, the spider had always remained as a psychic implant in Sarah Jane's mind and the crystals, which are from Metabelius 3, had just made it conscious again. Webs begin appearing all over London with everyday spiders all beginning to grow in size and Sarah Jane, with Ronnie and Clyde, use Mr. Smith's Xylot crystal, which is an opposing power to the Metabelius crystals, to blast the queen away and turn everything back to normal. However, there was also another version of the story. Servant of the Spiders was the next story idea where Sarah Jane begins having nightmares about the spiders. She tells Ronnie and begins acting strange like in the episode before. Sarah Jane invites Toby, who appeared in the Eternity Trap, to the attic. Clyde and Ronnie follow Toby to see what he's doing when he tries to zap them with the Queen Spider's powers and a spider appears on his back, then jumps onto Ronnie's back. Clyde gets back to the attic to warn Sarah Jane, but she begins dreaming of the spiders and gets trapped in her own mind before a spider appears on her back. Both possessed Ronnie and Sarah Jane corner Clyde and get a spider on his back, and Mr. Smith explodes, revealing webs on his screen. Back in Sarah Jane's mind, she learns the Queen Spider has always been ready to take over Sarah Jane again, but then Maria and Luke came into her life and reduced the Queen's hold on Sarah Jane for a little while. In the attic, the spiders begin growing in strength as a small probe unit detaches from Mr. Smith and smashes through the window. It enters the Chandra's letterbox and reveals a hologram of a human version of Mr. Smith with a suit and a bowler hat, just like Smithy from the last video in Meet Mr. Smith. Mrs. Smith warns Gita that her daughter is in danger and quickly shows her the infinite wonder and understanding of the universe and she goes to stop the spiders. Gia manages to convince Clyde and Ronnie to break free of the spider's powers and they go to Sarah Jane and try and do the same thing and using her sonic lipstick she becomes free of the arachnids and they teleport them home. Another story relating back to classic Doctor Who would have been Miracle on Bannerman Road. This was a Christmas special set to star Tom Baker, who played the fourth Doctor, and was going to follow a similar structure to A Christmas Carol, dealing with the past, the present, and the future. This episode was initially planned to introduce Skye as well. Luke and K9 would have returned for a Christmas lunch, and Clyde and Ronnie would have gone to the Chandra's for a Christmas party, when Sarah Jane finds an alien pod on her doorstep. Sarah Jane misses the party to investigate the pod, but ends up sleeping when she is woken up by The Guide, a character played by Tom Baker, similar to The Ghost Christmas Past. Sarah Jane sees she is in the middle of sleeping, and The Guide takes her through the sofa to see her past 16-year-old self and her Aunt Lavinia, who is driving. Young Sarah Jane notices a couple are in danger in a shop, and she runs to help them. The guide and Sarah Jane invisibly watch young Sarah Jane run into the shop and she finds the couple at gunpoint and older Sarah Jane absolutely looks horrified. The guide then takes Sarah Jane to the present at the Chandra's party with the guide wanting to know what the people of Earth are like. Sarah Jane sees Luke, Clyde and Rani talking about how brilliant she is when she sees a spark from the overloaded plugs. She can't help unfortunately and the guide takes her to the future. They arrive on the moon with the earth completely destroyed and Sarah Jane looks horrified and the guide leaves with the last words being The Dark Legion are coming, you must stop them, you must save the world, you have been chosen. Sarah Jane instantly wakes up five minutes after she'd fallen asleep when Mr. Smith announces that a Dark Legion battle cruiser is approaching Earth carrying the robot warriors of the Jernokidal Creston race. Sarah Jane runs over to the Chandras to get the others and she unplugs the dangerous appliances. The Dark Legion appears on the screen and K9 suggests that they should use the new program Luke has been developing, which reflects an exaggerated version of any attacker. Mr. Smith boosts the signal and the Dark Legion sees Sarah Jane and her friends as huge robotic versions of themselves. Sarah Jane threatens them and they leave, but Sarah Jane hears the guide's voice and the pod opens revealing a baby girl. The fourth doctor then comes strolling in telling Sarah Jane she needs to look after the girl that he had taken away from the Dark Legion. The doctor leaves and Sarah Jane agrees when the girl then transforms into a 14 year old and it ends there. Don't sit too close to the screen. 
Luke is staying over with the Langers when Carla's new boyfriend's daughter is watching a kids TV show such as the Teletubbies or In the Night Garden. The characters in the show seem to be directly talking to the daughter and it begins happening across all of London. Turns out an alien race are harnessing electrical impulses in children's brains via the television program. Their aim is to get rid of humanity so that they can live uninterrupted in the electricity and it's up to Sarah Jane and the gang to stop them. Wallpaper While redecorating, one of the Bannerman Road gang strips off some paint off a wall to reveal an old wallpaper underneath. Faces would appear on the wallpaper and they would have been some sort of alien from another dimension coming to Earth by stepping through the wallpaper. Underground Something underground is coming up through the cracks in the pavement, connected with the old childhood game of not standing on the cracks. Supermarket Sweep An alien is operating in a supermarket with a voice coming over a tannoy in the empty store. The story would have been Luke and K9 battling the alien alone. And finally, an untitled story about none other than Ace returning from the Seventh Doctor's run. The episode would have shown what happened to Ace when she left the Doctor and even cleverly edited the 80s episode where she left and extended the scene to see where she would have went off to. The episode would have had Ace turning up to Bannerman Road randomly to see Sarah Jane. Russell T Davies had stated that they'd done enough for the children of the 60s and 70s and it was now time for the children of the 80s. But anyway guys, that is all of the untold stories and unfortunately all of the stories that we never got to see from this incredible show. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure that you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for any more Sarah Jane and Doctor Who content. Now, the series may have never had its full proper ending, but of course, last year in lockdown, we did get Farewell Sarah Jane, which finally saw the end to these most loved characters. However, just before Elizabeth Sladen's death, Russell T Davies said when she wanted it to end, she'd just have to tell him a year in advance as it was her show and she would have the deciding say. During this conversation, Sladen asked him, do you know how to end it? And Russell confirmed that he did, telling her that Sarah Jane would do something magnificent and then she'd make sure the kids were fine and then she'd just go up. What do you mean up? laughed Liz. You mean into the sky? Yes, replied Russell. She'd go up. Onwards, onwards into the stars. Just up. Do you fancy that? Oh yes, that sounds nice, she replied. And as they say, the story goes on forever. Stars, 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 stars.